Hi guys, welcome back to A Window to the North. Uh, my name is Sarah and here on this channel I share my love for traveling and exploring the world, living a nomadic lifestyle and I am here to give you tips and tricks if this is a lifestyle that you are either starting, wanting to start or just would like to know more about. A few weeks ago I started this series about how to become a digital nomad and now we're moving on to things that you should consider or how to decide which destination you should move to as a digital nomad. Here I have some tips for you of what to consider and then we will move on to introducing different destinations that offer digital nomad visas in the future. So let's break down the things that you should consider when choosing a destination. Number one should of course be costs. Costs include cost of travel, how much will it cost you to get to the destination. There are some really beautiful destinations out in the world but depending on where you are, um, trying to get to them might be rather expensive. So if you are planning your travel route, it might be a better idea to slowly move towards them to, you know, have little nomad stints in places in between. Cost of living, which will be a whole series on its own as well. But um, how much does it cost to live there? Iceland, for example, is a fantastic country that, you know, has absolutely astounding nature but the cost of living is very high same in many different nordic countries for example i live in sweden the cost of living in sweden is you know quite quite high same as i lived in finland finland finland's cost of living is through the roof and many big metropoles are the same so cost of living is something that you should consider how much money will you need per month in order to survive there when you make a decision on where to go strength of currency this is something that i mentioned in my video about how to save money when becoming a digital nomad the currency exchange rate so how your currency and the currency that you are prob most likely going to be paid in compares to the cur currency of the location that you are planning to stay in. oftentimes for example the currencies of places in southeast asia are weaker than for example the dollar or the euro therefore not only do you earn more but also your for your one dollar you will get a lot more in a different currency which is of course beneficial on the other hand if you move to a country where the currency is stronger than your own currency you will need a lot more money to buy something cost of healthcare depending on which kind of current coverage you have how much would you have to pay how much does healthcare cost if you have to pay parts of it yourself is a big consideration that you that you should keep in mind never gamble on your health thinking that you're just going to be fine nothing's going to happen to you just you know that is the one thing that you really don't want to be stuck with healthcare issues that then aren't covered and that you can't afford cost of healthcare kind of also includes cost of vaccinations um, and medication that might be required for traveling to that destination i also mentioned this in the video of the hidden costs depending on where you go you might need extra vaccinations don't forget to check on that to protect you from diseases that are common in that place and depending on where you go you might for example also have to take something like malaria prophylaxis pills that prevent you from getting severe cases of malaria should you for some reason contract the disease so these are things that you need to keep in mind i traveled to namibia and there I did take malaria pills and they were quite expensive I have to say this is something that my health insurance did not cover because they did not see the necessity for me taking malaria pills so I had to cover this myself and yeah these are quite expensive so these are these are things that you should consider before making a decision on where to go another really important thing to keep in mind is duration by duration I mean on the one hand the time that it takes to process the visa this is particularly if you are traveling on a digital nomad visa because if you are in one country and you decide to go to another country and you realize you need to leave your current country within a week's time then you cannot travel to a country that you know the visa process processing time is a month or so although most countries are quicker than that but this is something that you should keep in mind and on the other hand duration of your stay there how long are you allowed to stay in that country if um, I've I've said this a couple of times now I am a fan of slow travel therefore for me I prefer places where you can stay a little longer and get adjusted to the culture and the country and get to know the people and everything I feel that's a big part of travel of course you do you 
But um, if that is something that you also feel would be a part of your travel experience or that you resonate with, then of course how long you are allowed to stay in a country plays a big role or should play a big role in choosing your destination. Next, let's talk about infrastructure. And by infrastructure, I of course mean A, the obvious, how do you get around in that place? Will you be able to take public transport? Would you have to invest in, for example, a car or in um, one of these little motorcycles? When I studied in the US, we were we European exchange students. It was in Flagstaff. <laughs> Um, which is in Arizona but does get snow because it is so high up the mountain we European exchange students were the only ones almost in the university that did not have a car and instead all went to Walmart to buy bikes little did we know that in at least Flagstaff maybe also other <laughs> other American cities you do not winter service the pathways because other than a couple of European students nobody is stupid enough to ride a bike or walk during a snowstorm so this is something that you should definitely keep in mind almost more important than that for a digital nomad is digital infrastructure so is fast and reliable internet available to you if you build your business on you know being digital being online then that is one of the most important things that you need to take into consideration furthermore are there any co-working possibilities where you can connect with other digital nomads where you can access fast internet where you can maybe sign up for activities and just generally find a community a like-minded community so that you don't feel lonely and that you have a productive place to work again this depends of course also a little bit on what your style of work is are you somebody that enjoys co-working spaces are you more the silent worker that likes to close the door are you somebody who can work in cafes i for example cannot work in cafes i get so distracted by everyone around me that i get barely any work done so this is something when you consider your working style that you need to consider is this available for you to actually be able to be product productive and earn the money that is needed to finance your lifestyle and then of course there's the question of healthcare again the infrastructure regarding hospitals and doctors and all of that the best health insurance that covers all your expenses won't help you much if there is no hospital no doctors or anything like that that is able to help you when you need help another thing that you should definitely take into consideration is security now security of course means on the one hand crime rate how probable is it that you will fall victim to a crime and here i am not saying that you know countries are unsafe or the world is an unsafe place i am more also trying to point towards what are the rules of behavior that you know locals or other digital nomads recommend this is something that depending on where you go you should probably check in forums for example there might be places that are generally safe but where you should not take a cab uh, where you should not walk home in the dark alone in the evening for example in Namibia it was perfectly fine to walk around during daytime if you know you wouldn't be flashing all your fancy logo super expensive gear but at nighttime it was strongly recommended to take a cab on the other hand if you go to a place like Sweden for example here people actually leave everything unattended so if I go to the beach I just drop my bag and go for a swim and I know my bag will still be there when I come back same with phones people actually use their mobile phones in Sweden in a restaurant for example to put them on the table um, to like signal to other people that this table is taken and um, it is very unlikely that that phone will be stolen while they go and fetch whatever it is that they're fetching. Security of course also refers to political stability meaning that um, how politically stable is that country? Will you run into the chance of there being a political coup of some, time, of some form or other forms of political unrest is something that you should be considering when deciding where to move next. Now these were the obvious ones let's talk about a few that maybe people do not consider as much for example sexual orientation unfortunately as we know there's still a lot of countries that are very close-minded about people's free right to choose to love whomever they want to love and depending on what your sexual orientation and preferences are you really need to consider where to go to make sure that you do not get into trouble 
Similarly to that and something that uh, I have personal experience with is of course racism slash the color of your skin. Particularly if you are a person of color and come for example from the US, you might be surprised by how much less people of color there might be in for example parts of Europe. And this does not necessarily mean that all of these places are racism or that you will encounter straight out racism, but it could for example also just mean that you are the novel in town. For example, um, Sweden is a bit better, but um, for example, when I lived in Finland, there aren't many brown or black people in Finland and because of that Finland generally has a very low rate of immigration of 7% per year and because of that people, particularly older generation, has prejudice against people that, you know, aren't Caucasian, that aren't white. And that is something that, you know, even though it is, might not be straight out racism, although I have also encountered that in Finland and other places, it is something that, you know, you might not feel as comfortable with. Same goes for Eastern Europe, for example. So I've been traveling through little villages in Poland and let me tell you, I was the sensation on the town square. While people were not, you know, saying mean things to my face, they were at least staring and that can feel uncomfortable and that you should be considering if that is something that you A, are okay with or uncomfortable with and if you aren't, that then maybe these are not destinations for you. And last but not least, gender security. Particularly as a woman and particularly as a woman that might be wanting to travel on your own you should consider how your gender or how women are seen in the country that you want to go to and what the rules of conduct are meaning that if you decide to choose to travel to a to a predominantly muslim country are you required to cover your hair in some places for example um, i've been to dubai and in dubai it is actually so that it is quite open-minded to a certain extent particularly for foreigners however you are asked to not run around in like shorts and you know bikini top outside of the beach area although there's unfortunately a lot of people that do not adhere to the requests of their host country which I find a bit sad but that's a different story um, but for example if you wish to enter a mosque um, or a place of worship you are required to cover your arms your knees and your hair but it is not only Islamic countries that require this of women there are plenty of places in the world that have special conduct for women that you should be aware of and that you should try to adhere to when you want to travel to them or decide that if that is not for you choose a different travel destination and of course one of the most exciting things to consider as a traveler or digital nomad is climate do you like it warm do you like it cold would you like to stay by the beach or do you prefer mountains or are you somebody that would really enjoy to enjoy subtropical climate and you know kind of a rainforest feel but not only that also consider what is the climate going to be like in that location while you are there for example let's take sweden where i currently am um, the summers are fantastic the sun doesn't set it's bright and light and the winters are beautiful too when it is snowy and you know everything is glittering and it's a winter wonderland wonderland however autumn as in the month of november partly also december maybe even october and spring the month between february and april are horrible in my opinion they are gray dark rainy and generally absolutely unpleasant and for me personally I feel they could induce seasonal depression so this is something that I recommend not only should you think about the climate of the place in general but also keep in mind what the climate is going to be like when you are there which also brings us to the point of natural disasters is the place that you want to live a natural disaster zone <laughs> or does it have certain natural disaster seasons like hurricane seasons and so on and if so is that a risk that you are willing to take are you fine with that do you know what to do if you choose to go there at that during that time take these things into consideration and last but not least maybe not as important for everyone to give a thought to but maybe for some of you family meaning uh, do you have a partner that is going to travel with you and if so is that if that partner is not a digital nomad themselves or does not earn money themselves online will they be able to accompany you on a partner visa 
many digital nomad destinations that offer digital nomad visas do allow for partners to join and um, of course if you have kids it's a whole different sort of consideration that goes into the choice of your destination as well I feel and of into the length of your stay so these are the things that I suggest you should consider when choosing your destination for your next adventure for moving abroad or um, starting or continuing your digital nomad journey i hope that these were helpful if they were please give it a thumbs up and i'll see you here on the next one bye